In this video, I'm building an economic model of love and communication. And this is my second video in a two-part series. It's a Valentine series because someone on my other channel requested a couple of Valentine's videos, so I figured I'd do this because I, I would like to show you what is the process for building your own economic model from scratch. And I have not built this before starting the camera for this video. This is me actually doing it live where I just I would just like to think through a problem such as a problem about communication which can go wrong in relationships using an economic model. So here we go. Oh, and one more thing. I have a different video that gives the steps to build your own economic model. I'm not going to go through it in a structured way in this video. This is just you watching me build my own model. And the first step, of course, is to come up with appropriate choice variables. So communication is actually a two-way street, so I actually feel like I might need at least two choice variables. And one is communication with your partner when it's hard, when you need to communicate that there's something that you're not experiencing positively in the relationship, and therefore you're communicating something that might be a challenging conversation. So that communication on your part to them, but then there's also if they have something to communicate to you that you're not going to like to hear, are you present for that conversation? Do you listen? So I'm going to let these two be called communication, yours to them, and listening. And listening, I, I don't just mean hearing their words, but being like emotionally present during a conversation when they have something to say. So I will call this L for listening and C for communication of hard or necessary truths. This, this is basically communication of things that you know if the two of you can work through this thing, then, um, then the, the relationship will be improved or will be better long term. So when I'm going to set this up, I'm going to set up a maximization problem where I'm maximizing some objective function by choosing my two choice variables, which need to be much more distinguished than that. So let's let that L be a curly L and C for communication. Now, the next step is to come up with a cost benefit table for both of our choice variables. So let's do that. And these are really just brainstormy ideas. Why would you want to communicate more? Why would you want to listen more in a relationship? And by the way, it's possible for communication to be too high. Sometimes you get too much feedback from your partner and that's going to have a negative effect on the relationship. So I might want to keep that in mind and if possible, build that into the model. So here are the list that I came up with. Of course, this is going to be personal to every person who's building the model. There's no such thing as a right or wrong model. There's just a model that's, um, that's logically sound that captures your personal logic on a particular topic. So here we have, um, why would you communicate more? Well, you would communicate more because it improves the relationship. Um, now, improve is a verb that we'll, we will need to get rid of to put it into the model. Quality of relationship is a much better um, benefit, but in any case, we're just brainstorming here. Um, you might communicate because that is uh, a mark of integrity on your character and you would like to be a person of integrity. It could be because you value honesty between you and your partner is just something you value and communicating is um, promotes that honesty. The cost, of course, is you might overwhelm your partner with um, whatever you say, if obviously if they don't wanna hear it. And also there's just the discomfort of having that conversation uh, about something your partner may not want to hear. And then why would you listen? And by listen, it's not just listening, it's being emotionally present. And of course, what are the benefits of listening? And of course, the biggest benefit I think is going to be the quality of the relationship, but there's also your partner feels valued. That, that would be an altruistic thing because that's about their utility, not your utility. Relationship quality, of course, is utility for both of you. Um, you might listen because this is going to prevent more uncomfortable conversations if you can actually listen well and sort through this issue. And it prevents conflict in the future if you listen well enough to understand what the issue is. 
Now the cost of listening is, for one, it may incentivize them doing this more often. Like you've heard about relationships where somebody, somebody is a really good listener and they're really good at, you know, listening to their partner talk about the issues with the relationship and then their partner likes that experience and therefore they do it all the time and it ends up being a negative dynamic. So um, we need to acknowledge that there can be that kind of cost to listening and incentivizes that. Um, but there's also just the discomfort of the conversation. Like maybe, maybe you want to just emotionally shut down and not really listen in the conversation because being emotionally present for that is way more uncomfortable. Now, I did not build into this actual compromise where the two of you sort of sort through how do you solve this in a way that works for both people where maybe fully fixing the problem is going to be too big of a burden on the partner. So that might be a third choice variable, but I want to keep this uh, a reasonable, a reasonably sized model for this video. Okay, so next step, I get to pick my favorite um, costs and benefits. So relationship quality, well that's the same over here, so I'm just going to pick it once. Um, discomfort of the conversation is also the same in these two models. So I could actually probably build this model very, very simply with just the one benefit and just the one cost. So now we've actually built a full model where you're maximizing relationship quality minus discomfort, where both of those things are a function of how well you communicate and how well you listen. Now, of course, we know that one of the issues here, like if we wanted to make this into a time discounted model, the discomfort of the conversation is like one day, or maybe maybe it lasts a couple days or whatever, but the relationship quality is this long-term thing potentially. So if you get a hyperbolic discounter that cares way more about discomfort right now than the long, long term payoff of this, then you could get a really negative cycle. In fact, like you could build this into the model where relationship quality, um, where there's, there's a discounting term on this, on this one. In fact, let me just do that. So I've just added this importance weight, beta, which is basically you discounting the future, beta is less than one, um, where the relationship quality is experienced in the future and the discomfort is experienced today. So the lower beta is, or the more you're discounting the future, the less likely you are to listen well and communicate well because you care so much more about the discomfort of the now than the payoff in the future. So, I mean, I could, I could build this model forever. I could, you know, add things and subtract things and get new insights from it forever. But really what I'm trying to do in this video is just show you the process of building a model and show you how you might build in just interesting ideas and interesting concepts and use the structure of a model to actually think through an interesting and meaningful problem.